The NFL schedules have been released into the wild, which means we now know when the Browns will be playing, who they're playing against, and with NFL teams getting a little more creative about how they announce the schedules. Uh, the Browns did a video with, uh, there is an animated video with Brownie the Elf as a professional wrestler, uh, taking on caricatures of their opposing teams with Nathan Zagura, an actual WWE wrestler and native Clevelander, The Miz, on commentary. So that's a nice touch there, a nice funny thing that they that the uh, uh, the PR team came whipped up with and came up with and animated together. It looks kind of it looks nice. They had some funny gags. I'll put a link down to that in the description. This isn't going to be a week by week prediction. I'll be I will be doing that eventually, but I do want to get a little bit more research in on some of these teams off seasons before I make start making official predictions and stuff like that. However, I do have some thoughts on initially looking at the schedule here. First thing that popped out to me was the Browns had two primetime games, week two on Monday Night Football on the road against Pittsburgh, and week 17 at home against the New York Rodgers and Pals Jets. Uh, I am sick and tired of Thursday Night Football games against the Jets, I even though... Even with, even with the new look team with Rodgers and they signed all of his buddies, still getting always getting the Thursday night football game against the Jets. It feels like it happens every single year. And if it's not Thursday night football, it's another not Sunday night football game against the Jets. It's getting a little weird how that seems to happen. It seems like ever since Baker Mayfield debuted in that Thursday night football game against the Jets, they seem to just kind of uh, keep going back to that. It seems like an old reliable for the football scheduling people. But I guess I shouldn't complain about primetime games anyway, even though Thursday night football has kind of uh, de devolved into what it's become on Amazon and stuff like that, but I, I guess I'll take a primetime game, I suppose. Uh, now, there are three divisional games in the first four weeks for the Browns, starting with week one against Cincy, and I do think that that Bengals game will be a really good litmus test as to where the Browns are early in the season. I, I understand that teams can get, they can get better, they can get worse as the season progresses, but Andrew Barry's making moves, and the, and the Browns see themselves as legitimate contenders in the AFC. And I feel like in this first, in the first five games of the season, the Browns are really going to see where they stand, as they have a bit of a tough schedule early on. Now, I do think the schedule does seem to get a little bit easier as the season goes along. Again, teams can uh, surpass expectations; some teams will underachieve. But if we have to go based off of uh, previously the previous year's results I do think this is a schedule that where if they can get through the first half of this season with a decent record maybe if they can get through this you know a couple games above 500 there's a stretch near the end of the season where they have a pretty seemingly more friendly about as friendly of a stretch as you can get uh, for an NFL season where you have I think the the Bears and the Texans who were the two worst teams last year back to back I know both of those teams made improvements and there's always hope after stuff like the draft and the offseason but there are some games, that the Broncos are in there as well, where it's just like not all of these teams are going to take that next step and become instantly playoff contenders after being uh, after being dog water last season. That's not going to happen. Although their final two games could be tough, again, depending on how the new look uh, New York Aaron Rodgers and Pals Jets turn out. And again, they, they end the season with the Bengals the same as they started with week one. So the Bengals aren't going to be cakewalks. But again, I do feel like the Browns, if they really do feel like they have a contender, then they have a really good shot of making something out of this season, which is more than we've seen the past couple years for Browns football. So, you know, we're, we're kind of begging for scraps here and seeing that stretch at the end of the year where uh, there, there's some of some not high tier opponents listed again the season can change but if we're going on last year results there are some op opponents there that aren't as that just aren't as good as as some of the others earlier on in the season and if they can manage the, to get a decent record the first half of the season uh and, and come out looking pretty good with that stretch and have that get that there then i feel like that could be this could be a, a pretty special year for the cleveland browns now again that that is re relying on the Browns having a decent record coming out of that first half of the season, which is what we were saying last year, where it's like, well, if they could get to, you know, if they could be like four and two in these first, you know, in the first X amount of games or whatever, then, oh, they should have a, a decent route. But uh, they underachieved early on in the year and they dug themselves in a little bit of a hole that they just weren't able to get out of as the season went along. And that's what a poor start can do, even with the uh, seemingly friendly stretching at the end of the season. If the Browns don't get moving in that early season, then suddenly those games start to have a lot more they start to become a lot more must win and the team can kind of maybe start to play clenched up a little bit and not and not be as good as they can be and that can be an issue so i i feel like with the browns this coaching staff is going is going to have to really focus on having a team that's ready to play coming out of training camp and coming out of the preseason 
making sure they have their 53-man roster exactly as they want it because uh, they have a lot of divisional matchup matchups early on. They have an early bye week, which which could mean those later games uh, they, there there might be some fatigue setting in. And also coming out of that bye week against uh, you know that bye week in week five, you have a game against the 49ers where you know I know better than to underestimate the 49ers no matter who they have back there at quarterback. That team is is loaded and they they're always a contender. So they're going the Browns are going to have to really. They're gonna to have to really be ready to go from the start. They're not gonna. They're not exactly getting getting settled in with the schedule here. I feel like it's kind of flip flop from what from what, a, from what a comfortable season might be. But I feel like if they if they're ready and if they're focused coming right out of the gate and they don't have some of these coaching and communication issues that plagued them last season, uh, then this season could be a bit of a different. They could flip the script from what we saw last year and the year before, really, uh, to maybe having an actual successful season that the Browns fans could have hope for looking back. Although that as a Browns fan saying like, Oh man, maybe they'll give us hope that, that, that usually leads up to that, that, that usually leads to laughter and rightfully so that's just hasn't how it's gone throughout most of the Browns history, at least through my lifetime anyway. Uh, so thank you. If you made it this far into the video, I will see you at the next one.